gross. Morning. I ordered coffee and it is so gross. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody, <clears throat> and welcome to Coffee Talk. Um, this is my last day in Los Angeles. Uh, I fly home this afternoon. Um, I still have a cough. I think I'm going to probably have a cough for the rest of my life. Um, <coughs> so, um, for those of you that are here the first time, thank you for being here with us. For those of you that are here for the 457th time, thank you for being here with us. Um, okay, so, um, okay. So this one's a little personal for me. Um, I have asked my husband numerous times to tell me things. What do you mean, Jamie? What does that mean? Well, that means when, um, when I'm out of town and Michael is set to play golf, I have asked him to let me know because if my husband is out of pocket and I'm not in town and we have three children, I want to know that my husband is on the golf course because God forbid something happens, I want to know where to locate him. Cell phones are not 100%. Neither are condoms. See how that works? Cell phones are not 100%. Sometimes you're out of range. Sometimes you don't hear him ring. Whatever. Okay. I have also asked my husband, if you commit to a nighttime fundraiser when I'm out of town and you're going to get a sitter for my children, I want to know. Don't drop it on me the night of while I'm out of town. It stresses me out. I'm a mother <clears throat> who worries about her kids all the time. Don't stress me out about my children when I'm traveling for work. Is it is it really that hard? All I ask of you is to tell me things. I'm not saying you can't do it. <clears throat> I'm not saying you need my permission. All I'm saying is I would like for you to tell me. <coughs> Open your mouth like this and let the words come out of your face. I, I'm really not asking for a lot. Hey, babe, I'm going to play golf on the Wednesday. You're out of town. So from 12 to 4, I'll be on the golf course. Thank you. Hey, babe, I decided I'm going to go to a fundraiser on Thursday night. So while you're out of town, a sitter is coming to be with our kids. I'm not asking for a lot. Okay? So yesterday, I'm in the middle of a meeting when I see the number from my kid's school. And I look at the phone and go, that's weird, it's 4.30. Why is my kid's school calling? My kids get out of school at three o'clock. So I answer the phone, I say to the woman I'm in a, in a meeting with, <clears throat> excuse me one second, my kid's school. I answer the phone and it's Olivia. Mom, yes baby, do you know where dad is? Uh, what? Do you know where dad is? We keep calling his phone, but he's not answering, and I want to go home. Uh, I don't know where your dad is now, but I can tell you where his ass is about to be when I fucking find him. 
So I go, okay, baby, no problem. Let me get your dad, let me find him. So I start calling his cell phone. It's going right to voicemail. Finally, after um, five minutes, wasn't a long time, he calls me and I say, hi, uh, your daughter's looking for you. Why is it 4.30 and our children don't know where you are? He's like, they're at aftercare. What's the big deal? I go, no big deal, but our children could not get in touch with you. Where were you? He's like, Jamie, I'm on my way to go pick them up. I go, that's not what I asked you, bruh. Okay, this is when I become, then I look bad, right? Then I look like the naggy wife. Nah, bruh, you're not doing it to me. So I'm like, I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you where you, where you are right now. I asked you where you were. And I know why you don't want to answer me. So why don't you just say it? <clears throat> so he's like, I was playing golf. I'm like, why didn't you tell me? And Michael likes to do this thing where he shifts his reasoning to something about me. Like, well, I was going to tell you, but I knew you had me. Boy, if you don't miss me with that bullshit, don't try to make it like you couldn't tell me what you were doing in your day because I had to smack it up, flip it, rub it down. Oh, no. You can text me. You could open the motherfucking window and scream your head off. You can send smoke signals. You could attach a damn flyer to a plane. Okay? Don't act like you couldn't tell me you were going to be out of pocket and leave my children after school and then try to act like I was going to tell you, but I couldn't tell you because you had a meeting. No. Don't play yourself. Don't. Boy, if you don't miss me with that bullshit. This woman in the meeting with me yesterday had two kids. You know what she said to me? She looked me right in my face and was like, handle your business. I gave her a high five. I was like, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm going to stay real cool. Because here's the truth, Michael. If you wanted to be a good husband, you would. I'm about tired. I'm about tired of begging you for the same thing. I'm about tired of begging you to communicate with me, to tell me things. <clears throat> I'm about tired. Okay? So he was like, don't you think you're overreacting? Do I think I'm overreacting? Do I think I'm... Boy, if you so I said, you know what? I'm not even going to answer that. Because the bottom line is, the bigger issue is, if you wanted to be a good husband, if you wanted to be an upfront, truthful communicator, you would be. Let me tell you something, ladies. We twist ourselves into pretzels trying to figure out how can I, what's the way I can get through to him? How can I make him understand? How can I say it in a way that my words are magical and they receive, his ears receive them and his heart receives them? No, none of that is necessary. The truth is this, if they wanted to be a good husband, if they wanted to be a good communicator, if they wanted to handle their business, they would. And I, seriously, you know what? I'm not going to block you for your comments right now because I'm frustrated. But if you comment something stupid, I'm going to shout you out in front of everybody and everybody's going to see it. So don't. Don't do it. I am so frustrated. I am so frustrated that I have spent 13 years trying to convince this man that I am worthy of communication. Yeah, I'm twisted, Cindy. Yup. I have spent 13 
years, 13 years of my life trying to convince this man to communicate with me. And you know what the truth is? He just doesn't want to. It's that simple. It's not that I haven't said it the right way. It's not that I haven't communicated to him what I need. It's not that I haven't found the way to say what needs to be said in a way that he can receive it and blah, 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 blah. No, y'all, no, no. The fact of the matter is he just doesn't want to. And when you are dealing with people in your life where you go, hey, this is how I need you to act and they don't do it, they just don't want to. People do what they want to do. That is a fact. That's just it. This is what I'm telling you. People do what they want to do. And they don't do one thing more. And at the end of the day, am I asking a lot for Michael? No. But for whatever reason, he has this mental block about telling me he's going to play golf. He feels guilty. It's a Michael thing. Not a Jamie thing. And I have tried for years to be like, I'm the coolest wife ever. I don't care uh, if you play golf. Like, I've tried to, like, go play golf. I'm super supportive. I'm the best wife. Blah, blah, blah. It's not a Jamie thing. It's a Michael thing. And so I share this with you not to put Michael on blast. Because Michael and I will work through it and we'll figure it out and... If we don't, we don't. And if we don't make it another week, we don't. And if we do, great. But my point of bringing this up to you is to say, stop twisting yourself in a knot trying to figure out a way to make somebody understand what you need. They know what you need. They heard you the first time. They just don't want to give it to you. Let me say that again. You are killing yourself trying to figure out a way to get him or her to receive what it is that you need. They received it the first time. They just don't want to give it to you. That's the bottom line. That is my husband. That is my husband. He loves me. Okay? It's a Michael issue, not a Jamie issue. I've said it a thousand times in a million different ways that I can say it. He just doesn't want to be that husband. He just doesn't want to be that guy for me. End of the day. End of story. So, okay. I either, and it's not just a man thing. Somebody just said it's not just a man thing. 100% no. Anybody in your life that you are trying, trying, trying to get them to understand what it is that you need and you keep saying it in different ways, hoping that it'll make a difference, they heard you the first time. They just don't want to give it to you. And that hurts and it's disappointing and it's upsetting and we don't no, and here's the truth, and Angelica, it doesn't go in one ear and out the other. No, they get it. They heard it. It stopped in the brain. They just don't want to do it. And you know what? <clears throat> when you are a wife or a husband, and you are looking at the person who is supposed to be your partner, and you are going... Wow, you really just don't want to be that guy for me. You just, you really just don't want to be that girl for me. Like you really just don't want to be that partner. It's, it's like, it's almost safer to stay in the, um, okay, let me just say this y'all. 
please understand that this coffee talk space is a safe space. What I share with you about Michael and the feedback you give me and what you share with me about your man and your whatever and I give you feedback, it stops after this video. Y'all don't need to worry about whether people are going to keep bashing Michael and blah, blah, blah. I've been doing coffee talk for three years. The people in this community love that man. They are rooting for us. They are praying for us. They are pulling for us. I promise you, y'all don't need to worry about him. This is, this is a 15-minute, 18 18-minute video where we are in a safe space to talk about real things that hurt us. And when the video is over, we move on and we figure out a way to, to deal with it. So don't worry about people dog and Michael or bashing me or whatever. Just focus on how this can help me and how it can help somebody else. I'm just saying that sometimes it is safer to stay in the place where we keep telling them what we need because it is hard as shit to accept the fact that the person who looks us in the face and says they love us don't want to be the person we need them to be. That is a really emotionally challenging place to be. So sometimes it's safer to be in that cycle where you're like, I just need you to communicate with me. I just need you to communicate with me. <clears throat> So I just want to say the bottom line is this. We don't need to keep repeating ourselves about what we want and what we need. They hurt us the first time. They just don't want to give it to us. And that is where we need to figure out how we move from there, you know, because that is Michael knows what I want. He knows exactly what I need. If you said to Michael, what does Jamie want from this marriage? What is she asking you for? He would say, she wants me to communicate better. She wants me to tell her, you know, ahead of time when I'm traveling, when I'm playing golf, when I'm doing things. Do you do it, Michael? No. It's that simple. All I'm asking is for him to say, Hey, on Wednesday, when you're out of town, I'm playing golf. And if it comes up, if somebody texts him like, hey, you want to play golf? And he's like, oh, shit, yes, I do. Text me. Hey, babe, I'm going to jump in my dog fight. I'm going to be out on the golf course for the next four hours. God forbid anything happens or the kids call. That's where I'll be. Thank you. That's all I'm asking. He doesn't want to give it to me. It's that simple. He doesn't want to give it to me. And that hurts. It hurts. And it sucks. And it's exhausting. And I and I and really like I feel bad for the like what about the wives that really do ask for a lot? Cuz I'm not one of them. And here's the thing, real quick and then I'll let you go. Real quick. Whenever this happens and I come at him and we have the whole whatever, he always ends up apologizing. And what I don't understand is why go through all of this if you're going to, like, I don't, the apologies mean nothing anymore, y'all. They mean nothing. It's like, I'm sorry, uh, here's a lamp. It's like, it doesn't mean anything. It's so frustrating. Marriage is so hard. It's so hard. I'm going to ask him one again. Why didn't you tell me? Why won't you be this person? Why? And I'm going to let you all know what he says. I'm going to let you guys know. Okay. Um, yes, Natalie, he was in a marriage before where there was issues with him playing golf. But you know what, girl? You got that ship sailed so many years ago, so many years ago. When I met Michael the first time, he was already divorced. That, may, th that was a, you know, that ship has sailed. If you're still holding on to some sort of baggage from a relationship you had in the 90s when I was in high school, like, 
I can't. I cannot. I absolutely cannot. I don't punish Michael for my abusive relationship. No. Every time he apologizes, I don't even hear it. Do I diddy diddy dum diddy do? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. The best apology is change behavior, and I don't get that. I deserve it, and I don't get it. Um, all right. I love you guys so much. I love you for allowing us to have this safe space. I love you for allowing me to vent when I need to and for venting when you need to. I love you for just showing up. I just love you. I love you. Um, have a great, great day.